Hey everyone, it's Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 44, where you send me your email questions. You can send them to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And if I don't read them on Strange World, which chances are I'm not going to because I'm taking way more phone calls, I will try to get them here, but be patient because I get a whole bunch of calls and I have to filter through a ton of them. So let's just get right to it. This one goes all the way back to July 14th. Let's start, shall we? This one's titled Bag Containing Moon Dust from Apollo 11 Expected to Sell for Millions at Auction. Passing this along, not sure if you've heard of this yet. And it's from ABC News. And yeah, the the story, you can look it up. Long time missing Apollo 11 artifact moon dust auctioned. It sold for millions and yeah, the, a, a bag that was supposedly on the moon. So anything that supposedly went to the moon, there's still people, still a lot of collectors out there that will uh, pay a whole bunch of money for lies. So fortunately, if you collected any one of these things, in fact, if you own any moon artifacts right now, you might want to dump them while you can. This next one's called It's About to Get Hot in Here. Mark, thanks for the, for the promotional video about our meetup. It helped us draw in about 25 people. It's real and it's about to get hot. Capital H-O-T. I have your back in Oregon. Let me know if anyone needs help around here. We will have another meetup in about four weeks. Hopefully you will promote us again soon. Here's my most recent video on Flat Earth Best Chris Cox. And the video was titled... Flat Earth Organ Meetup Memes and Unification of Flat Earth Movement. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. This next one's called Flat Earth Meetups Denver. Mark, hi. Can you please add me to the list? Receive meetup info each month for Flat Earth Denver. That's from Diana D. And new because I, I don't know. As far as meetup info, people just send me stuff, but there's no list to receive from my side. Your best bet is to go to whatever video that the meetup is being you know that I've, that I've got on there and look at the contact info and just ask whoever whoever's emailing at, at the end ask them to to be put on a list uh, i don't do that from this side i make promo videos but honestly I, I barely have time to make those so trying to keep everybody updated on wherever these meetups are is not going to be something i'm going to be doing thanks this one's called flat earth mama jumped up at 3 a.m that's a decent title Hey, Mark, I about jumped up out of bed at 3 a.m. listening to your show when you said the Denver Post interviewed you and put you on the front page. Congratulations. The way I stumbled onto Flat Earth was my huge curiosity about the Masons and Pyramids as a teenager. I always knew there was so much more going on. Ancient civilizations intrigued me, and I just had a spiritual quest within myself. Of course, 9-11 opened my eyes, and I then went on to really digging into conspiracies, looking for clues, never expecting that I would end up at a crazy place called Flat Earth. But I really love it. I was listening to Santos Bonacci. I was at a red light, and he said it. It was the one idea or concept that just immediately made so much sense. All the dots connected extremely fast for me. I'm not sure if my mind just meshed with it organically or if all the studying and digging I had done for years just prepared me enough to be able to see this. I believed in my heart and knew that Flat Earth was the key to so many other puzzles. I was so happy and yet I had no one I could share this with. Bummer, lol. This is definitely not something to just throw out in a conversation. Eventually though, I did. To sum it up, my entire family laughs hysterically at me, lol, and they still love me. When I was single, I brought it up immediately, believe it or not, and I tell you, it made people think I was insane and should be locked up. I have a friend that got it, but quickly backpedaled. I overwhelmed him to the point of cognitive dissonance. I can't say thank you enough, Mark, because on many a sleepless night, I listened to your shows and it gave me peace. Luckily, I am now in a wonderful relationship with a man from India, and we didn't have to discuss Flat Earth. He said, babe, we are good. There is a dome or we would be protected. No worries, babe, on that subject. But when my family asks him if he believes in Flat Earth, he says, of course, and then winks at them to spare himself from their mocking. Smart guy. All my best, Mark. Don't lose sight when all the media heads your way. Oh, they could already be steps ahead of this, just using it to put all of us against each other or even more. And that's from Jen Eva. Thanks, Jen. That was really great. This one's called Metro Detroit Meetup. 
G'day, Mark. My name is Anthony, and I am simply trying to connect with flat earthers in the Metro Detroit area. I would love to initiate a group meetup, but not sure how to reach people. Please share my email. Thanks, bro. Well, Anthony, in fact, the Detroit meetup just happened recently. So just type in flat earth meetup Detroit and contact the person at the end of the video. And it's also going to be in comments. I try to pin those as well. So con contact that person. You'll, you'll get somebody. This one's called Flat Earth Friends Friendship Request. Let's see here. Fort Scout wants to be friends with you and send you this message. Would you like to be friends? You can accept or deny this request on the following page. FlatEarthFriends.com. I think I'm a member, so I will put that in the respond pile. But yeah, there's a place called FlatEarthFriends.com, so I will put that in my respond after the show pile. This one doesn't have a subject. Mark, I don't usually watch YouTube, but I was searching for something that could help me get a visual on the course of the luminaries as described by Enoch. And I happened across your video, they are hiding God with the greatest lie ever. Wow, well done, Mr. Sergeant. I did like the non-biblical approach on the flat earth controversy. As much as I hate to admit it, most people were, when scripture is produced tend to not have an interest any longer. The Lord started opening my eyes a couple of years ago, and the things the Holy Spirit has shown me has been amazing. I have seen things that I can't unsee and heard things I can't unhear. It has been an amazing experience. I don't know what your relationship with the Almighty is, and that's your business. But I'm assuming since your eyes have been open to the truth, the Lord has chosen you to do his work. You have a different viewpoint to the concept, which may be effective. My belief in a flat earth is totally from digging deep into scripture and praying for clarity. The reason I have been inspired to write you is really not clear to me, but I've been led to do so. You said in the video to tell people, spread the word, make people aware of the lies. Well, I tried that at first, and you can guess how well my friends and family soaked in that info. To make matters worse, one of my son's in-law is a pastor. Because of his traditional beliefs, you can only imagine the horror in his eyes when I visit. My point is that we have a power over us that is greater than we can possibly fathom. God is the Almighty. He opens eyes at his appointed in time and only if he wants them opened. I just sit back and watch the majority of this world walking around with their eyes wide shut, continuing to be deceived by the lies from leaders, government, NASA, and the devil. Who is the instigator of it all? The Bible is being played out before our eyes. It's God Almighty's will. I pray for your request to spread the truth. And even if you get through to one person, that's one that can be saved. May the Lord be with you and God bless. That's from Sheila. Thank you, Sheila. This one's called Toroidal Shaped Earth. Hi, Mark. My name is Margaret Mc McMahon. As you have seen from the email, and I'm writing to you from Glasgow in Scotland. Please excuse me if you've ever previously addressed this subject, but I wonder what you make the theory of toroidal-shaped toroidal earth. Do you think this might be possible? For a number of reasons, I believe that we should be looking north as well as concentrating our efforts on the Antarctic ring and the so-called south. We are constantly directed to look to Antarctica for answers. Our attention is encouraged when we hear or see the protection afforded the southern continent. But what about the North Pole and the fact that the Van Allen belts do not seem to touch there? Is this significant? Why is the North Pole unprotected? Who owns it? Who is in charge? Are we being told the truth when they say that the pole in the Northern Hemisphere is the middle of the Arctic Ocean covered by a pack ice and we should just accept this without investigation? Is the pack ice in the North a natural deterrent equivalent to the military forces in place in the so-called South? I heard you say that the Mercator map is not off the table as far as you're concerned. I wonder if you would elaborate more on this. I understand that investigation of the North Pole may mean acknowledging the possibility of a hollow earth, but I believe we should cover all our avenues. Mount Meru and the four continents? I know you will hear you you will hear this all the time, Mark, but I would like to thank you for opening my eyes to flat earth. I listened to your flat earth clues after a weird conversation one night in a Glasgow pub in 2015. I think time stopped while I listened and re-listened to the clues. Goodness, it was such a shock. Unfortunately, it didn't. I didn't take your advice about the first rule of flat club. Most friends and family accept what I'm saying with laughter or quiet concern. I really don't mind. I'm ready if they want to talk. However, one very close friend took offense. Yes, offense to my suggestion that she interview someone about the flat earth theory on her podcast. She runs a Scottish UFO and paranormal group on Facebook. 
and the accompanying podcast. Her response on the two occasions, yes, I never learned, that I mentioned at Flat Earth, was to put up discussion threads on Facebook after she had introduced it by saying she didn't believe it and found it irksome. Needless to say, the trolls lifted their slimy little rocks and crawled out, spewing their poison, bitterness, and name-calling. Suffice it to say, as she put it, withdrew my friendship. I have never in my life been described as a F-tard... <laughs> All sorts of names here. Uh, retard, imbecile, and the worst of all, an evil, yeah, the evil C word. She never named me, but she knew who they were all referring to. And she chose not to delete any of this from her page and actually laughed off the liked most of the comments. Since I ended our friendship, she has continued to make ad hominem attacks against Flat Earthers' vile, evil personalities. She also disastrously interviewed Mick West about Flat Earth, and yes, Mark, you're right, karma came knocking very swiftly on her door. She has since weakly apologized without actually taking responsibility. But I have learned from this lesson and been able to have an objective view on the type of person she actually is. She, on the other hand, has learned nothing and is now a miserable, bitter, lonely person attacking everyone and anyone that she chooses. And it says, Flat Earth is a great filtering system. Thank you again for opening my eyes. I'd like to say how much I enjoy you and Patricia's The Good, Bad, and Ugly broadcast. It's brave and extremely laugh-out-loud funny. We need this every so often with all the drama going on within Flat Earth. Your dry sense of humor comes across very well. And Patricia is just my type of person. I agree with her in so many ways and how she conducts herself in general. But that gal just can't handle her drink. <laughs> She's so funny. Anyway, hope you managed to answer this in some way on your radio show, which I love. Please give out Greenwich Mean Time to Ta. All good wishes, Mark. Margaret. And the, what was the original question? Oh, I honestly, I hadn't looked into to the toroidal-shaped Earth. I really hadn't. The North Pole, yeah, there's probably something interesting going down there. But remember, after Admiral Byrd did his stuff up in the North Pole, he was sent down to, to the, um, the Antarctic continent, and that's where he spent the next 30 years. He never went back to the North Pole, as far as I know. So, yeah, there may be something up there, but I don't think we're giving it much attention at the moment. This next one's called Latest Position. Hi, Mark. Just wanted to share that I finished book seven. It includes support for the Flat Earth issue, and I may have been too subtle about it, but it was an attempt to get my past three years readers to look at the Flat Earth issue by showing the solid evidence and then saying, but maybe while we were contained, the firmament and NASA's barrier and Appendix E, the gods have morphed the Earth into a VR sphere, and I'm beginning to doubt that now. I have lost two people over this Flat Earth issue who are ardent followers and gave me rave reviews on Amazon. Now they don't speak to me. Such is the price of truth. I went to Denton, Texas yesterday for the fourth time, sold some books to the bookstore there. The local college kids love the topics in the seven books, and the store does carry my books, whereas I can't get Barnes & Noble to do it. I self-published, although Borders Bookstore was saying yes to carrying my books, and then they closed. Anyway, as I drove to the Denton bookstore, there was a small assembly in the courthouse lawn, old Texas town with a stone courthouse in the square center of town, and a guy had a big sign attached to the back of his pickup. The flat earth is real. I was late for the bookstore meeting, so I made a note to go back, and when I did two hours later, no one was there. Dang it. I still totally support your work, and the more I look at the evidence, the more I'm convinced I am and am attaching an email that I wrote Robin, Amazon reviewer extraordinaire, which caused her to drop me. Any, anyone seriously considering something that we have all been programmed to believe must be crazy. And the email suddenly terminates when someone or something caused my email to terminate and send. I do not speed type and do not hit any control keys. It is as if someone didn't like what I was saying and terminated the email. At any rate, I may put GEP back to the total support for FE as I opposed to the teaser it is now. I think you have the pre-teaser version, version 29.7 is the latest with 40 more pages of anomalies. See copyright page on top. The real kicker in all this is the Antarctic question. Is it an ice wall or is it a continent? And thanks to Google Earth and CGI Photoshop and GoPro, how can we know for sure what it is? But I've now lost two friends over the flat earth issue. Sheesh. Attachments clarify four key issues and alienated two readers. More power to you, Jay. Thanks, Jay. It's good. This one's called... To do called Flat Earth Clues Metabunk Missing Curve. Hi, Mark. My name is James, and I obviously absolutely loved your Flat Earth Clues series on YouTube. I 
already watched it twice, once after being convinced about Flat Earth and once after I realized it with the truth. I greatly appreciate your style of presentation. You present the information in an intelligent manner, are respectful of your audience, no name calling uh, people who disagree with you, and have a good voice for the narration. I also appreciate your diligence in posting links for others to do follow-up research. If you'll indulge me for a few minutes of your time, I have a story I want to share with you about how I came to believe in the Flat Earth, because I think it's highly compelling evidence that people aren't addressing. It's something I must myself would like to make a video about to share, but I don't have the software or skills to do so because I liked your other videos so much, I thought I'd pitch the idea to you. I've been doing a lot of research in the, into the topic, reading every point and counterpoint I could find, and while both sides kept bringing up great points, nothing felt really conclusive to me. What I did keep getting hung up on, though, was the curve math, the eight inches of drop per mile squared. I did dozens of calculations and kept finding I could see things that were supposed to be hidden, but then there were all these explanations about mirages or recreation or whatnot, so I really couldn't be sure. Then one of the debunkers brought up a site called Metabunk, who said about the curve calculation, whoa, hold on, you flat earthers are missing several key points that throw your numbers way off. They talk about observer height, light refraction, and how the elevation drop isn't the same as measuring the view obstructing bulge between the observer and the topic, sorry, and the target. They even made a calculator for it, and that's on metabunk.org slash curve. That seemed reasonable to me, so I started running a bunch of calculations through there to check it out. The numbers still didn't work. Sure, they were able to explain away a few closer observed targets, but all it really did in the end was extend the range before things didn't work to be further away from the observer. It still puts a vanishing point for the top of the Statue of Liberty around 25 miles, when it can be observed much further away, for example. The best example is calculating the world's long distance record for photography. Giving Metabunk the ultimate amount of leeway by calculating the photographer position from the absolute tip of the mountains he stood on, though it looks like he was only about two-thirds of the way up and adding six feet for the photographer's height, the 2.5-mile target mountain should still have been hidden under almost four miles of bulging earth. Yet we could see pretty much the whole thing. That's when it really hit me. If I'm using the mathematical formula of a group of people who are actively trying to disprove the curve while airing all input numbers as much in their favor as possible and it still doesn't work, then there simply can't be a curve. After letting that sink in for a few weeks, as I found other evidence and did more research, I thought about how powerful a message it is to use the dedicated debunkers' numbers against them. I think it would be cool if someone made a video called Metabunk Proves Flat Earth or Metabunk's Curve Doesn't Exist, something along those lines. It probably wouldn't have to be any longer than one of your Flat Earth Clues installments, a few minutes worth of intro and half a dozen examples showing the numbers being inputted into the Metabunk page ending with the ultimate long-distance photo example. I think something like that would be among the most compelling 10 minutes of evidence on YouTube. If it's not quite something you'd be interested in doing, maybe you know someone else who might want to take up the project. Sorry for the long message, and if you got this far, then I thank you for your time. Thank you also for being a major contributor to helping me wake up from the delusion. I appreciate your insight more than I can express. Keep up the great work. Regards, James Dunsemuer. Thanks, James. And no, I'm probably not going to do a Metabuck one along those lines. Hopefully someone that's listening to this will, will be able to do it. But we'll, we'll get to it one way or the other. Don't worry. This one's called Questions. Mark, hello, I just watched your introductory video. I plan to watch more, but wondered if you have a list of some sort of clues or proof about the flatter theory or beliefs. I've always been a science-driven thinker who is also a very concrete believer in God. It just doesn't seem logical, I know, but because of this, I believe I should never stop questioning. Thank you in advance, Leslie. And yeah, Leslie, if the, I made a video, a series of video, well, I shouldn't say, I made a series of playlists just for this. And the one I like the most is called the Flatter's Shortlist for New People. And you can just type that into YouTube or go to my channel, it's under playlist, Flatter's Shortlist for New People. It is a series of videos, I don't think any of them are mine, and the, they are the best introductory videos, in my opinion, currently. And I try to update them on a regular basis. I think there's 24 or 25 of them now. This next one is called Moon. Hi, Mark, from Nathan in London, England. Been a long time since I've emailed you. Hope you are well. Question is, when we see weather balloons at high altitude, 
we see the sun but never the moon. What, in your opinion, is causing this? Atmosphere, light refraction, don't say it's an illusion. Okay, say it. I'm a Bible geocentric. I worship Jehovah God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Um, what We see the sun, but never the moon. I don't know. We do see the moon sometimes with weather balloons, but it's rare, which is why I think weather balloons, uh, you know, they're banned from setting them up at night. That's that's where you should be sending more of these suckers up uh, at nighttime. But, but, but no, you can see the moon. You absolutely can see it. There's been videos out there that have been touched on it, really interesting ones, as a matter of fact, that, that catch just a frame or two of the moon that should not be there, especially when it's supposed to be over Arizona and Australia at the same time. How does that work? This one's called Converting the Masses One Person at a Time. Mark, I've told three people about the Flat Earth last Saturday, and it was amazing. My first thought was to write you and tell you the story. The first time I wrote you, I told you about how I told my wife and how that did not go well. She has since come around to it, helping ease it into our three children. Since then, I have been trying to come up with a way to mention Flat Earth to my parents, who are not exactly the most open-minded people regarding conspiracies. In fact, the first real exposure we ever had was Kent Hovind's video series on evolution, where we brought up the Masons, Illuminati, etc. My plan was to apply the same reasoning from why we reject Big Bang evolution to Flat Earth from a biblical perspective. And I was gearing up. That all changed Saturday when my mother asked me to t take her to meet my brother-in-law halfway to Charleston to South Carolina. We'd gotten out of Knoxville, Tennessee when she asked if I heard anything about those crazy flat earthers. My very slow response was, I don't think it's all that crazy. Her very slow response was, you don't? For the next 200 miles, I was channeling Mark Sargent, Ken Hoven, Rob Skiba, and every other researcher I had ever listened to. I had that Neo moment from the Matrix where he said, I know Kung Fu, and Morpheus says, show me. All of the information that I had been absorbing over the last two plus years came pouring out. I have listened to you interview so many times that the timelines, facts, and figures just flowed. Needless to say, my mother was stunned, but not fully on board. She said that she guessed that she had something to talk to my brother-in-law about after we met up for the second half of the trip. We stopped for lunch at a buffet. And then I had to head home. However, while I was away from the table, my mom brought it up to my brother-in-law. I guess in the hope that he could set me straight. He is a strong fundamentalist Christian with a bachelor's in political science. He started quoting scripture about the circle of the earth. I picked up my dinner plate and said, what shape is this? I could see the light bulb turn on when he said circle. I said, set the plate down in the middle of the table and started explaining Antarctica, north, south, east, west, four corners in the dome. For the next hour, he was asking, what about this and what about that? And again, the answers just came rolling out. By the time I finally left, he was well on his way to being convinced. And my mother, having seen the exchange, was much further along the curve as well, pun intended. I sent them lots of flat earth links when I got home. Sadly, I haven't heard from either of them since which may not be a good sign. Lastly, I know where there is a mini TV satellite dish pointing at a visible tower about half a mile away. When I get the picture of it, I will send it to you for your slide deck. Best regards, Jeremy in Knoxville, Tennessee. Love it. I wish I had more stories like that. That's really great. Okay, this one's called Test the Globe Billboard Update. Hi, Mark. Just wanted to stop in and give you an update on how things are going with the Test the Globe billboard campaign. I also put a link in your Flat Earth Clues. I am assuming that it is okay that I am directing people to your video, but I am following my own advice as I am always telling my kids to never assume anything. So please let me know if that is okay. If it is okay, I thought I would let you know so you could just see you can get an increase in hits over the next four days or so. I noticed that my bounce rates for the website is about 50%, so I went in and reworked the first page, first page and added your clues page to this top, hoping to get that number down and if nothing else, provide them with a link to good video right off the bat. Attached is a screenshot. Also want to throw an idea your way. When people hear the term flat earth, it has negative connotation to it. People immediately laugh, imagine falling off the edge, etc. because the population has been programmed to do so. We headed out to the streets Friday night and handed out cards with no personal contact info, picture attached. We would stop and ask people if they had ever been tested, have ever tested the science behind the globe. This sparked much interest in communication and seemed that they were way more open to discussing it. The few times we mentioned Flat Earth, people laughed and walked away calling us names. 
Also, we have the website flatbydesign.com. Most of our shirts say Research Flat Earth on them. I'm now thinking about changing some that say Research Flat Earth to test the globe. You can tell people to research Flat Earth, and most will do so on their search engine of choice when you do this. That person is inundated with all kinds of information from people asking Reddit and Quora questions like the Earth is flat. And the Flat Earth Society is always the first few pages. You get way better results with YouTube. But there are so many sites on debunking Flat Earth, which I watched as soon as I finished watching 200 Proofs. But having the website attached with the billboard has been great because we can provide content while still overwhelming, not nearly so. So I think if anyone decides to do a billboard, I think they should seriously do as I did and create a simple billboard with a web address. Try not to use the term flat earth. I get this whole movement is a flat earth movement and everything has been built around those terms. But if you have something that affects so many people negatively and something else doesn't, and it leads you to the same path, why not change? I have someone in Kansas City area who has a degree in languages and selling people on an idea. He reached out to me and wants to help improve the wording of my site. I am not suggesting that anyone uses my site per se, but want to put the information that I am fine with them doing so. Right now, I have no plans to monetize that site, maybe provide a link to a site that does, but I have never been comfortable promoting anything that benefits me. The only time I personally posted any links to our t-shirt company was when I was telling people proceeds were going to go towards the billboard. I like the idea of being able to say I am not trying to sell you anything, but that's the truth. I also had a thought for those who like the idea, but do want to monetize their site, maybe major cities that put up a billboard could do something like testtheglobe.denver.com, testtheglobela.com. Now we have a Test the Globe Facebook Kansas City page that they can find through the website. Just putting out ideas out there. And uh, I don't have a name for this person. So uh, this one's, oh, and then here's the link. Bark, I forgot to put our contact info in the email. That is flatearthjohnny at gmail.com, sent original billboard and Kansas City meetup info. His YouTube name is Flat Earth Johnny, and his real name is John Armstrong. My username on YouTube is Flat Earth Johnny, and my name is Tammy. Oh, I did not know it was Tammy. Should you want to call or text for any reason, my number is blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Tammy, for all that great information. Love the enthusiasm, love all the detail. That's great. This one's called Just One Question. Hello, Mark. My name is Matthias. Matthias, M-A-T-T-I-A-S. I am 31, live in Stockholm, Sweden. I am totally an open-minded person, conspiracy theorist who questions everything. But I don't bother too much. My theory is no matter if the Earth is flat or square, is this all just a hologram or something else? We, just, we can't do anything about it, so I'm trying to be the best person I can, help others, and enjoy the small things. Love is my answer. Anyway, me and my friends watch a two-hour movie on YouTube under the dome, and we were pretty fascinated by it. Of course, no matter how obvious something sounds, we did some research and find some flights which are making no sense if the Earth is flat. The flights from Santiago, Chile, Auckland, New Zealand, blah, blah, blah. What can you tell me about this? And that is watch Flat Earth Clues number nine. If anyone, and I haven't gotten one of these emails actually in a while. I mean, I get them like once every month, but the um, as far as the Auckland, New Zealand to Santiago, Chile, which is interesting because really that's the only flight anyone ever mentions. Look up Flat Earth Clues number nine. That's my answer. I'm not even going to answer it on these things anymore because it just, it's, it's out there for you guys. Flat Earth Question. That's one that's called, what do you think causes the eclipses? And this one was sent all the way back in July 18th. And to whoever sent this, this was sent by Kevin. Uh, now I know, after seeing the eclipse myself when I was down in the blackout zone in Sa Salem, Oregon, Ground Zero, and watching the fantastic videos by DITRH and Mike Helmick, and there's a, there's lots of other people that are doing it now, I, the sun is self-eclipsing, no different than the moon. The moon is self-illuminated, creates its own waxing and waning crescents and blood moons, and the sun does the exact same thing. It's just brighter. That's all it is. This one is called Tracking Aircraft in Southern Regions. Mark, why do I approach... Mark, who do I question regarding this? The airlines 
or ministers in government and what do you suggest be the question I pose to whomever would really appreciate your input thanks for your help God bless uh, who you who should you talk to about the tracking the aircraft in the southern regions uh, I don't know if you're gonna be tracking talking to anybody because eventually everything gonna come back remember the GPS system was designed by the United States military it's a, it's a DOD system Department of Defense created in the mid 90s so I don't think there's anyone you can talk to down there that's going to give you answers because eventually they're going to work their way up the food chain and eventually they're going to end up with the U.S. military and those guys aren't going to tell you anything. Pause while I drink some water. Okay. Reading dries out my throat, <clears throat> but I have to do it. This one's called Depressed. Mark, thank you for your videos and the video to address the feeling. I guess what makes me feel down was the sudden closed off feeling I get knowing that this world and universe is smaller than I thought. The unlimited expanse of space and adventure that awaited humanity does not exist. Also, the magnitude of the lie. Ever since I was a child, space filled me with wonder. I fed this wonderment with Star Wars, Star Trek, and other science fiction movies. Now it's outdated and silly. I'm not excited about the upcoming Star Wars or Avengers movies. Watching these movies now will remind me of how I was lied to and how pervasive this lie still is. Anyway, thanks for your work. I wanted to reach out. ER. I think the, his first name is Enrique. And yeah, Enrique, you're absolutely right, which is why I, I made a Clue 8, which was called Creative Force. At least I think it was called Clue 8, Creative Force, which, which kind of was a pick-me-up to people that out there that felt there was a certain number of people that felt claustrophobic. Even though you're in a building that's very, very, very huge and you can't even begin to touch the borders, you still feel claustrophobic because you all of a sudden the, the known universe that, that we all grew up with has shrunk down by 99.99999%. And yeah, I totally understand that. Watch Clue 8, Creative Force. And remember, you're, in a big, so you're still in a very, very big place. Or to quote the comedian Stephen Wright, it's a small world, but I wouldn't want to paint it. Think about that one for a bit. This one's called A Year in Space. Mark, it reminded me of something you were talking about recently on your show. Hope you get a giggle. And a Year in Space card. Oh, right. Yeah, it was. it's kind of a, it's a picture of like the interior of what the ISS should look like after <laughs> a year in space. There's all this crap floating around. Everybody has scraggly beards and long hair they look like cavemen basically and there's food and yeah it's all this crap how basically the, what he's saying and and uh it's by steven thank you steven for that and what he's basically saying is how in the world is the space station the inside of that thing so pristine after a year how is that even possible it can't be it's just there's no and especially since we never see them cleaning and what are they would what would they be cleaning with? I mean, how many how many paper towels would you have to send up there and then incinerate afterwards? And if you incinerated them, what do you you know you're burning up oxygen? So yeah, it'd be gross. It'd be awful. I mean, think of all the trash and everything that comes out of a submarine. Multiply that by a lot. In fact, ask submarine guys how what they do with all their trash. That's a, that's actually a pretty good question. This one's called F Flat Earth Quick Thought. Mark, remember last election when there were so many closet Trump supporters who voted for him? Same thing is happening with Flat Earth. So many people in the closet about Flat Earth. Absolutely right, James. And uh, before we go to the next email, I, I, I've got to use a Spice Girls reference. If you guys want to know why I think that 90% of the, uh, the Flat Earthers out there are still in the closet, it's because they don't know who to talk to. You know, yeah, some of you may be writing emails, but a lot of people literally are scared to death about bringing it up, hence the Fight Club reference, or the Spice Girls reference, which is, remember, Spice Girls, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. Remember that song back in the 90s, that big album? Won Grammys. Grammys. V voted, what, best album of the year? That sort of thing. S millions and millions of copies sold. Remember, this was before MP3s just destroyed the whole industry. Millions of copies sold, and yet nobody admitted to owning it. But when's the last person you wa 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 went over and looked through their, you know, back in the day, back through their CD collection or whatever? It's like, oh yeah, Spice Girls. No, no, it was it was one of those albums you, you kept to yourself, you played or, just when no one else was around. That's sort of like what Flat Earth is for a lot of people. They, it's that hidden cool little secret that everybody knows but since you don't know who else is a flat earther you don't know who to bring it up to it's, it's cool in, in in regards but yeah all right anyway sorry let's move on i don't want to ramble this one's called flat earth 
original title. Dear Mark, do you think the sun and the moon orbit us beneath the dome, or do you think it's far more complex like the multiple gates in the Book of Enoch? Thanks for your time and thought. Sincerely, Art McKay. I think it's both. I, I think the sun and the moon are up there, but I think the Book of Enoch has a lot of insights, and I think there's phasing, I think there's instancing, I think there's a lot of stuff going on with software, uh, and and how light is projected onto single... I, there's so many cool little perspectives. Remember, we're, we're advancing every year what, what, what we can create from a visual standpoint, multiply that by thousands of years and you you might get an inkling of what's going on up there. We can't answer everything that's going on up there. We're, we're limited to what our technology can express. Uh, beforehand, God had his tools, you know, God had his hammer and a saw. And as we developed, we, you know, we, we gave God more credit. Now I can safely say that God as it is at the very least a very, very good programmer. Let's move on. This one's called Southern Bell. Howdy. First time I think I've ever gotten that. Howdy. My name is Joan. For reasons unknown to myself, I phoned you and left a message, something I had never done before. Clearly, I have jumped. Anyway, to continue, I'm doing this because you started with Howdy. I've, I watched the video, They Are Hiding God with the Grace Lie Ever. It does make a body wonder. In case you haven't noticed, I'm from the South. I'm not going to try to do it like an Alabama accent right now. I'm going to stick with, like, Texas and slipping into Louisiana. So, the point of this email, assuming there is a point, why haven't you posted any videos for the, f for the last few years? As I said, makes a body wonder. Hope this finds you well and not locked up and drugged somewhere like Stephen Hawkins. Hawkins? <laughs> How disappointed God must be with mankind. It truly makes a body want to weep. Thanks, Joan. And Joan, what what happens here, and, and I, I will not say, why haven't you posted anything for a few years? I will send this to Joan. Uh, she probably watched, well, in this case, I think it was They Are Hiding God. If you watch one of those two videos, They Are Hiding God or Under the Dome documentary, those were not on my channel. They were taken and put on completely, and I let them have them. Let it say, like, hey, good for you. You get three million hits on one, and almost three million hits on another. Fantastic, great. But there's no other videos of mine on those channels, and so some people just stop right there. It's like, holy crap, uh, this guy, the 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 person that 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 YouTube page must have published it, so they don't know where else to go. So I have to actually say, nope, I'm still here, and then I have to send them my main YouTube page, which is which is Mark K. Sargent. Or, again, if you want, just type in Flat Earth Clues into YouTube and you'll eventually get there. She has not done that yet, so I will send it to her and, and kind of fill her in. Moving on. This one's called... No subject. Hi, Mark. I've been listening to you now for the past few months and fully understand the arguments for Flat Earth and this is okay. My question is, how do you think people will react if the truth is finally recognized? Would it end religion? Would it lead to anarchy? And would the whole system collapse? Um, potentially any one of those. <laughs> it's not going to end religion by any stretch because uh, remember, eight out of ten uh, people in the world are tied to one of the major religions. So it's not going to end religion. It's never going to do that. In fact, for me, it brought me back to spirituality. Would it lead to potential anarchy? Well, I'll leave that up to religion because the people that are out there, are they going to start burning down universities? I would hope not. Do I think the whole system could collapse? I think there there's ways around it, especially now that high-speed internet and social media is in play. I think we can keep people from rioting in the streets. I think it's very, very possible. They also go on to say, oh, another quick question. How do you explain comets and meteors? Just look it up. Type in flat earth meteors, flat earth comets, blah, blah, blah. It's just part of the system. Comets can be displayed in a planetarium. Remember, comets don't land anywhere. Comets is just another part of the sky, like stars and planets. It's, that's, it's just built in. Meteors, you know, find me one that's landed anytime soon. And any big ones and why they haven't hit population centers. Meteors, though, are just somebody throwing rocks into the aquarium. Basically, yeah. Uh, that was all of his questions and cheers from Gordon. Thanks, Gordon. Good stuff. This one's called What Time's the Globe versus Flat Earth Debate August 5th and 6th? Mark, I'm really considering this event for the debate. I live just three hours up from I-75 in Atlanta, but I've yet to determine when the debate will happen in the two days of the event since there's no schedule on the website. You're right, they deliberately did that so it wouldn't be disrupted. I emailed the Danoon Institute and have not received a response as of this writing. Do you know or have an idea? Please shoot me a reply. I would love the opportunity to introduce myself to you. If I get to attend, best regards, 
Jeremy and Knoxville and what they're talking about was the flat earth debate in Atlanta between Zen Garcia and Dr. Stephen Pigeon. And that debate actually was on Saturday, Saturday afternoon, right after lunch, as a matter of fact. But that was quite a while ago. I was pushing a month ago. Okay, this one's called Soul in the System. Mark, do you think a close or closed or contained system may explain the basis of a soul and its captured system? And if so, what are your thoughts on that? RW. Uh, maybe. I mean, I'm a big believer in the 21 grams scenario, which is, you guys, the Germans did a test on this. and There was actually a move, movie on it by um, starring Sean Penn, which when the body dies, it actually instantly gets 21 grams lighter for no apparent reason. And we're not talking about bowel evacuation or anything like that. I mean, it instantly becomes 21 grams lighter. Like there's some sort of electromagnetic charge that weighs 21 grams. And it doesn't happen with animals, but it does with people. And I believe the Germans figured out when that out when they were doing all that fun experimentation uh, during World War II. And I say that sarcastically. The uh, do I think that the soul is trapped though? Not necessarily. I think that, that after you die, you leave this world. And I don't, yeah, you might come back reincarnated sometime else later, but I think your, your energy, your thoughts, your consciousness leave this world and you go to an unlimited d d dimension and I'm not going to describe it or get into it. That's a whole other thing for another time. So I don't think we're trapped here. The, I don't think the soul is trapped here. The body, yes. I, and that's why everyone's trying to find a way out. Why wouldn't they? Mankind, that's what their ultimate goal would be. Men, that men in general, break through the barrier. How can we get out of here without dying? It'd be the ultimate goal of many a culture, I would think. This one's called Prep Guide Request. Hello, Father. Please send me the preparation guide at your convenience. Thank you. That's from David Stern. And I believe I sent him the guide. If anyone wants a free survival guide, I have one. It's only like two megabytes. It's called Empty Shelves. I give it out to everybody. I made it after I watched the whole Katrina debacle and watched people floundering around down there. And it's pretty good. It's about 100 pages long, and when you get it, you might want to print it. Otherwise, you're going to be smacking your head later and going, oh, crap, I should have printed it when the power was still on. Because it's made for a long-term power outage. This one's called Flat Earth and Heavenly Bodies. Mark, hope, was all, hope all is well with you and yours and that this address is correct. All there is we can see from the sun, moon, and stars to the dome, which we cannot see. The moon is a flat light as we always see the same moon day after day week after week month after month etc it does not rotate the sun may be flat as well and having no rotation why do we say the sun is hot when we have not nor anyone has ever touched it if the sun is hot then the moon possibly is cold all we know for sure is that the light from one gives warmth while the other has a cooling effect we also know each is its own light just as are all the luminaries the fixed and the wandering i was a convert within 15 minutes as my search for truth was rewarded though it is to be la it is it thought it to be laughable but with an open mind saw the truth amazingly from rs who at the time was oh rob skiba who at the time was still not certain of the truth of the earth being a plane of existence it's hmm. good that's from mark thanks mark this one's called greetings Hi, Mark. My name is Nikki Chelu. I live in Toronto, Canada and Bucharest, Romania. At the moment, I am in Toronto. You get around. From 1986 until 1990, I worked as a flight attendant and my father was a pilot. Both of us worked for Romanian Airlines. Both of us independently have seen UFOs on more than one occasion. My father flew in the cockpit from 58 until 98, yet he never flew to Antarctica. In 1990, I decided to experience life as an immigrant in Canada, and from 91 to 2004, I owned a travel agency downtown Toronto. I'm very familiar with Sabre and Amadeus reservation systems and know about the impossibility of a direct flight from South America to Australia. In 2015, I have heard of the Flat Earth. Initially, I thought is another fake news purported by malevolent entities such as International One World Government Corporation. I started to do my own investigation, and it didn't take long to comprehend Flat Earth is the real deal. Currently, I study and research Flat Earth since 2016 from a school of mystery perspective, as I am into occult studies and have a 30-year-plus years of magic in theurgy and thaumaturgy. I don't use those words much. Under my belt, is there any way I can be of help in general to the Flat Earth and particular to you? 
I understand. I consider we stand a better chance if we unite. Uh, please, please be so kind to consider me. In light, Nikki Chelu. You know what? I'm going to write her back and say hi and say I read this on the email. And, and, and you're just doing, you know, the fact that you know you're helping already. And getting the word out, also important. But thank you for that so far. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> do, do, do. Nope. I already read that one. This one's called Question. Mark, private jets. Do private jets fly in straight lines to their destination? They have money. Money equals corruption. Cheers, Liz. Uh, yeah, private jets still have to rely on the GPS system. I don't care if it's private, military. You will have to use the GPS system. That's There's no way around it. In fact, the military may have a way of getting off the GPS, depending on who you are, if you're at a high level. But the, the main GPS, the, anyone that has a, like a Learjet, I don't care how much money you have, you're going to have to use the military DOD system. This one's called Kyrie Flat Earth on Sports Nation. Mark, I don't have this the clip yet because they just aired it 30 minutes ago, but Kyrie Irving is seeking to get traded from the Cavaliers, and they are talking about it on Sports Nation on ESPN. The headline was something like, Did Kyrie's belief in Flat Earth lead to getting traded or something to that effect? Hopefully you can find it. It was just aired today, 1 to one thirty slot on ESPN. Yep, I got it, and I put it up on my channel. So thank you for all the tips. Guys, when you send me tips, I absolutely read them. I read every email that comes in. Maybe not in full detail if it's really long, but if it's a tip, I totally jump on it. Sometimes I use them, sometimes I don't. This one's called Flat Earth Epiphany. Mark, new to Flat Earth just a few months ago, not really a conspiracy believer because I do not have that much confidence in the government being that efficient. Maybe the incompetence is part of the charade. Charade? Charade? I came to your clues through Mar <laughs> Rob Skiba watching videos about giants of all things and not sure how I started down that path. I appreciate your clean approach in both content presentation and language. I think this will help the flat earth issue to be taken seriously. I was intrigued by the flat earth concept because of the implications it would have in the biblical arena. A lot of the events in the Bible are more easily explained in a flat earth than a globe. However, I was unable to embrace it completely. Still, I'm a little because of the implications it has on the moon program and the space program in general. Bart Sabrell, ISS, and the Van Allen have pretty much blown that away. I was really not clear on the moon phases and eclipse and was listening to Rob Skiba's video for the second time when something occurred to me that might be of interest. I've had friends who went to the Medjugorje and saw miracles in the sky. Medju M-E-D-J-U-G-O-R-I-E. -E, and saw miracles in the sky. I was skeptical and I still am, raised Catholic but now another denomination. One of those visions that many reported seeing was the sun spinning like a coin. I believe that is possibly spiritual deception. However, the sun and moon are discs just three or four thousand miles above. Then it could be one explanation that would make such possible in a dome. Keep it flat, Tom in GA. P.S. You have made me useless at work because I spend most of my time at the office watching Flat Earth on YouTube. <laughs> well, sorry about that, Tom. It, that does happen, though. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth Clues. Hey, Mark, I've been promoting you on Clash of the Clans Global Chat. Oh, the responses I'm getting are hilarious. Love your work and thanks, buddy. May I ask your thoughts on the Flat Earth Asshole? Much respects, Mickey Peters. I, I, I like Flat Earth Asshole. I, in fact, I used his slide. Mickey, I used your slide just so you know uh, in, um, in my main slideshow. I, I, I like him. He's He's got some good stuff. I like his energy. He's he's a whole nother demographic, and he's got a whole new way of presenting things, and I like it. It's it's edgy, and he's not afraid of, of tackling people head on, and I love the road trip that he did, and I love his rants, so I got nothing, nothing against Flat Earth Asshole at all, other than his title. In fact, even his title is good because it, it, it picks up that edginess. It's, it's a perfect personification of, of what he is. Moving on. This one's called... Wow, this ride is crazy. Mark, I've got technical issues. Every good thing I get there ends up being an audio... Oh, she's trying to make her own Flat Earth videos. Uh, make an audio or visual problem equals unusable. Bummer. Both my phone and camera have let me down. A full battery peters out. What the hell? Then I want to record phone audio breaking the news about me being a Flat Earther to my bestie bestie really to get her knee-jerk reaction and debate and the camera shut off that was recording the voice didn't know until late 
She said we continue the next day. I sent her the flat earth info, no response since, and it's been over a week. The only usable stuff is insults to my intelligence without the ability to let me speak or explain the science. Two, my son can't stand this. Every time I try to work on multiple flat earth projects I have going on, he's in the corner giving me a dirty look, being snarky, making fun and challenging me without letting me speak. World War Three, very disheartening and hard to do anything with his ears around. Can't wait for school to start back. Thank God for my little girl. She is on board, but too embarrassed to to film for me after all in public doing that myself three i'm hating my voice holy moly you you poor thing having to, to hear me those times via phone i sound hideous no, no everybody has to adjust to their own voice when they first hear it four cruelty i have just this week seen some cruelty from other youtubers calling patricia trans eric debay's mockery of hot potatoes on all of you what a dick and cote's troll making fun of her voice Wow, what's wrong with peeps? Making me rethink being on camera a bit, and maybe I'll just add a written narrative with my voice. I don't know. I may want to wait before I put myself out there from the go and just make the videos without face or voice, although I've been recording my voice for looking at the facts, the only exception for now. I just really had a bad week. Got discouraged, but I'm marching on like a trooper, work, working on a debunking a Glober's vid flat for thought part two and three. And my looking at the fact revised for video part 104. Sorry for the tirade, but I have to. Take care to someone. Take care to someone. I don't know all the text stuff. Uh, sorry for any typos. Just swinging from the hip, buddy. I am carrying on and won't give up on my projects. Thank you, Mr. Sergeant. Natalie. Hey, Natalie. It's nice. By the way, if you notice, there's quite a few women that write. And it's not because I am just dead on charming it is because uh flat earth resonates with a lot of women women uh have a, like a natural bs detector built in and they they know this stuff so it's it's great that a lot of women are, are getting involved and, and that's how we're gonna win this war anyway I mean, men are men are easy when it comes to this women not so much okay let's see uh, we got a few more uh, this one's called Trip to the Sun, Flat Earth Clues. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. How are you? My name's Adam. I've been following your work for a short time now. Just want to say hello and well done for tackling an awkward subject that I only stumbled across this year, really. I'm pretty sure your Flat Earth Clues video is what got me started actually after a random conversation with a family member about the subject content. Now I'm very open-minded, so I didn't have a knee-jerk reaction, but I did just scoff at the idea somewhat in my head and awe at the sheer notion of the idea, but welcomed it with open arms. Anything weird and strange, and I'm there. Then I got into Rob Skiba, and the rest is history. So I was into some strange ideas beforehand to that which the mainstream folk are and before the flat earth ideas, so it was no surprise that things could get even stranger. It just tied into place everything else I was looking for in the quest to hide God. Well, I shall not bore you anymore, but I did want to ask if at all, with all these researchers tackling Flat Earth, would it not be easier to debunk the sun instead? I mean, by that I mean testing the sun. Is it 93 million miles away, or is it indeed inside the firmament? What that at least would not be easier, if perhaps less expensive, to test that idea. And maybe you're the man to get on board with it. I've seen one amazing video, and probably the only one that would prove it to me, and it is this one. Well, hope to hear from you, Mark, and God bless. And I might as well click on that Ronin real fast. And it's called sunrise under the clouds uh at fl 280 flight 280 yeah no I and mean, there's a lot of people that are going after the sun i mean they're going after everything they're going after the moon they're going after the stars going after antarctica they're going after the north pole they're going after every aspect they can and no no stone is going to be left unturned but thank you for the suggestion that's awesome this one's called fake iss quick thought mark since astronauts lose a lot of weight and muscle after staying in space for so long shouldn't they look like Matt Damon at the end of the Martian movie? The astronauts in the ISS look like they still have the same body mass as when they left Earth. Excellent point. That's from James. Excellent, excellent point. This one's called... It's just in the title. Mark, my daughter asked me what are falling stars, but I don't know. Can you help me out there? Thanks, Mark. I want to give her the plain truth. That's from Al Lindblom. Uh, Al, just hopefully you'll figure this out by now. I mean, a lot of people, when they, when they email me questions, it's because they just watched the clues and they haven't really gone into the battery 
of uh, the huge, huge wall of content that's out there in Flat Earth right now. So just type in Flat Earth Meteors, Flat Earth Comets, Flat Earth Firmament. Take your pick. There's a whole bunch of stuff. But for me, the short answer is that meteors are just somebody throwing rocks, little, little tiny pebbles into a fish tank. That's all they're doing. Uh, should we end on this one? We'll see. We'll see if we can find a fun one. Mark, I posted, this one's called, I posted a flat earth thread on ancient aliens you might find interesting. Dear Mark, I heard about flat earth on coast to coast a few years back. A couple years ago, I started looking to this because I'm open-minded. I'm retired United States Air Force, special ops, visual information, and was a DOD contractor with Lockheed Martin at CENTCOM HQ for three years where I was an intelligence analyst. Now I'm an editor at my hometown newspaper in Virginia. Anyway, the more I looked into Flat Earth, the more my jaw dropped. I posted a thread a few years, days ago on ancient aliens on Facebook. You can imagine 98% of the kinds of responses I got, though I think I handled it well. Maybe you might look at it and see if there's anything you can add or share your opinion with me about. It probably won't make the Flat Earth Conference year, this year. I won't probably make the Flat Earth Conference this year, but probably will do do so next year if there is one. Also wanted to say great job on all you've done and are doing. Here's the link to that th uh, thread on Facebook. And you guys can probably look for it. I'd call your number, but I'm sure you're inundated with phone calls, most probably bad ones. Maybe one day. And that's from Chai Gallahun. And, and of course, one of his quotes is, imagination is more powerful than knowledge, which is true. And his other one is, being deeply loved by someone gives you strength. Deeply loving someone gives you courage. Awesome. You know what? We'll end on that. Those are two great quotes, two positive things, and we'll get rid of that. And so that'll do it for this email. And I'm, I'm going to try to do them faster if I can, guys. I'm just, can I, I just keep falling behind. I'm still working on eh, July, but we'll get there. And it, again, don't be discouraged. Send me emails, uh, leave me messages. Uh, don't, I mean, you can send me texts if you want. I'm not going to respond to texts, but at least I read them uh, briefly. And you can email me at msargent23 at comcast.net. That's msargent23 at comcast.net. My email and my phone number are literally in every single video I make. I try to do like a blanket coverage thing default on, on all my emails or um, on all my videos. So that's it, guys. Until next time, stay flat.